Hello people, I am the Rokonic Gamer, and today I'm going to be talking about the current state of Batman. Because there's a lot going on with Batman. You have Tom King leaving the Batman book, and James Tynan IV coming on to take over the book. He used to write Detective Comics, and now he's coming over to write the main Batman book. And so that just got announced the other day with Batman Day, and I want to talk about that along with the current Bat books, what I like and what I don't like about what's going on with Batman. Before we get into all that, I just want to let you guys know that tonight at 6.30 p.m., Pacific Standard Time, so September 24th, Tuesday, uh, I'm going to be doing a live stream with John De La Raz. He's a writer of Flying Sparks. I did a live stream with him before. We're going to be talking comics. We're going to be talking about his new volume of Flying Sparks that comes out, so make sure you stay tuned to my channel for that. Uh, it should be fun. If you want to ask us any questions, show up to the stream, talk and chat. We'll answer whatever questions you guys have for us, and we're going to just be talking about comics, and it should be fun, but yeah. Anyways, let's get on to the topic of the video. So, Tom King's Batman is very controversial. Up until the wedding issue, everyone was everyone was digging it for the most part. There were some lulls there, but it was pretty interesting. People liked what he was doing. Um, I wasn't keeping up with it completely, but I read some stuff. I liked War of Jokes and Riddles for the most part. There was some stupid stuff in there, but I really liked what he did with Kite Man. I still think that's one of the best things he's done in the entirety of his Batman run. Um, but, yeah, it was just a lot of ups and downs, and it was good for the most part. And then the wedding issue happened, and it was a complete fake-out, and no one really liked that at all. Even the Tom King uh, defenders were not big fans of that. And then the book just hit a lull after that. There was a lot just mostly bad. There was some good stuff, like the Mr. Freeze arc was great. I believe that was after the wedding. Um, but besides that, there was just a lot of... Just terribleness. Tom King didn't really know what he was doing. All he knew was that he wanted to write an epic 100 issue storyline. He didn't really know how he was going to do that, and it shows. It drags very. It's terrible. It's similar, sort of, what uh, Bendis is doing with Superman right now, to where the the pace in the Superman book from Bendis is just an action comics and Superman. Everything he's doing with Superman is just such a crawl. Nothing happens. We had, I think, something around like 30 issues of different Superman books written by Bendis before we got, like, any type of progress on his new character, Raw Golzar. And it's similar with uh, Tom King's Batman, to where just nothing happens. It's just a lot of bat cat, cat, bat, bat, itty, cat, cat. That's the way they talk. That's how Catwoman and Batman talk to each other, and it's so annoying. But if you don't know what happened, um, Catwoman and Batman were going to get married, and then Catwoman left Batman at the altar, and it's the worst thing that's ever happened to Batman ever in his entire life, apparently. It's just the worst, even though we already saw this happen before. It's a little different, because in Batman Hush, if you remember that classic book <laughs> from, written by Jeff Loeb, and the art was done by Jim Lee. It's my favorite Batman book where Bruce Wayne is Batman, because my favorite Batman book overall is uh, Black Mirror, which is where Dick Grayson's Batman. But anyways, uh, that's besides the point. Uh, in Hush... Catwoman and Batman really bond. It's probably my favorite Batman and Catwoman book. Um, and they really bond in that book. And Bruce learns to trust Catwoman when he even tells her a secret identity. And he really brings her in. And throughout that, ent that entire book, um, but all, everyone's pretty, like, a lot of people that Bruce knows are sort of under or with Hush. They're with the villain. And so it's hard for him to trust people during that book, but he does tr trust Catwoman. And then at the very end of the book, after he's already beaten Hush and everything, Catwoman tells him to hush. And this suddenly, like, sends Batman's mind into, like, a freak out. Like, okay, this person I thought I could trust, I can't. What is going on? And so it's this whole thing to where he was in love with this woman. He completely trusted her. And now that's all gone simply because she said the word hush. So it went from him being completely in love with her to just, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do here? Is it just her saying the word hush? Is she actually with hush? There's a lot of connotations with that. And uh, we that was explored later in other comics. But in this... She just leaves him at the altar. There's no, like, her being with bad guys or anything that Batman knows of. She just leaves him at the altar, and Batman suddenly, oh, no, my whole life is over. When I feel like what happened in Hush was a lot worse. And then, like, in following storylines, Hush came back and, like, cut her heart out. So that was um, also a lot more dire of a situation than her just leaving him at the altar. It's so weird. Everything that Batman's been through and Tom King decides, you know what would really cripple Batman? Catwoman leaving him. But it's just been weird. He punched Tim Drake out of nowhere, and there hasn't really been any explanation for that other than, oh, no, he had some nightmares, and then he punched Tim Drake, and he's that's kind of it. No one's really called out him out on it. Uh, Alfred's dead, except not really, because in every other book that Alfred's in, Alfred's still alive. 
So in Tom King's Batman, he's dead. Maybe it was just another nightmare or something. We don't know. But he's apparently dead, according to Tom King's book. So that's whatever. Uh, he's kind of doesn't really care about Damien at all. He just left Damien. Like, he went off with Catwoman now. They're, like, back together. And he left Damien. And also Dick Grayson got shot in the head in front of him. And um, he decided to not go visit Dick Grayson, like, at all after that initially happened. Like, he was initially there in the hospital after the surgery happened. And then after that, he's like, peace, I'm out. And he never goes to check on how Dick is recovering. Now that Dick Grayson's Rick Grayson, he lost all his memories. Batman does not care. He's too busy being on a beach with Catwoman because that's where his priorities are. And it's just the main Bat book is terrible right now. Everything that Tom King is doing with it, it's just awful. The art's fantastic. What Tom King is doing is terrible. But fear not, it's all, all doom and gloom because we have our savior, Peter J. Tomasi, who is writing Detective Comics, and Detective Comics has been a blast. The main Batman book has been terrible, but Detective Comics has been great because Peter Tomasi's been ignoring literally every other event. He's been ignoring the main Batman book, Alfred's still alive and well and everything's fine with him in his book, and also he's been ignoring Heroes and Villains, e not Heroes and Villains, Year of the Villain, even though he's about to be doing an issue time with that, but he's supposed to start way long ago. So, um, for like the past, I don't know, like three issues are supposed to be a tie-in to Heroes and, uh, why do I keep saying Heroes and Year of the Villain? But Peter Tomasi decided not to do that. Instead, like the last three pages of each issue, he'll throw in a, a Year of the Villain tie-in. So he's just like, oh yeah, by the way, Year of the Villain. And he's doing whatever story he wants to do. So, uh, for instance, in Detective Comics 1008, it's just a fun Batman Joker story. Just a classic story. Joker takes over a theme park. He invites Batman to the theme park. Or, well, not a theme park, a carnival. It's like the the Killing Joke Carnival, basically. I think it might even be the same one because he mentions the Batman but that they've been there before. But he takes that over that carnival and he takes everyone there as hostage. He puts these little like neckties around them that'll release, uh, release Joker gas and kill everyone if Batman doesn't play along. So Batman plays along. They go all through the carnival together. They do like the strongman thing. They go through the tunnel of love. They have a lot of uh, back and forth banter that is just great. And sort of Batman the Animated Series slash Arkham-esque, like their banter, it's so good. Tomasi does it great. And also Doug Mankey, who's probably my favorite artist right now, at least at DC, he's so good. Um, and he does a great job with, throughout this entire issue of drawing, like Batman just being so fed up with the Joker, and the Joker just having the time of his life, just pissing Batman off, and it's great. And uh, I, I love this issue so much. It, a candidate definitely for the best one shot of the year it's so good if you haven't read it check the comics 1008 you should definitely read it and it's just a fun issue that um tomasi wrote that he didn't do any big tie-in with anything else he just wanted to do a fun batman joker story that was a one shot and he did it and he also did prior to this he did a, like a two-part batman specter team up which was sort of like brave and the bold-esque it was great um not the cartoon but as in like the um the old comics were Batman and here superheroes and stuff used to team up. It's it's similar to that. Just Batman and the Spectre team up. There, Jim Corrigan has been like taken by some cult that is like sort of worships the Spectre, and Batman has to try to figure it out. And the Spectre goes to Batman to help him figure it out, and it's just a great team up comic. And then we just recently got a really fun Deadshot storyline to where Deadshot. Did, so, well, so Bruce Wayne and a bunch of other billionaires are going somewhere on a private jet, and Deadshot has been hired to take them all alive. So he takes the jet down accidentally oh no he doesn't take it down it gets like hit by lightning or something but the jet gets taken down on this island where there's these like world war ii vets that are there and bruce wayne uh goes with the world war ii vets and like they help rebuild rehabilitate him a little bit so he can go and save his other billionaire friends from deadshot and he fights deadshot being uh island batman and it's just a fun storyline so detective comics has been great peter tomasi has been doing such a good job with saving batman with this because Tom King's doing everything he can to destroy Batman, with, but with James Tinian, however you say his name, coming on to the book, I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be good for Batman. But who knows with Tom King's claws still in Batman through the Batman Catwoman miniseries. But I'm hoping um, James and uh, Peter Tomasi both just ignore what Tom King's doing with that and do their own thing, because just Tom King's no good for Batman. Like Tom King's done some good comics, but he's not, he's no good for Batman. Keep him away from Batman. He, I'm really hoping they ignore it. The thing that I really like about James Tinian uh, being on the book is that he's expressed so many times that his favorite part about Batman is the Bat Family. And that's great because Tom King, it seems, the thing he hated the most about Batman was the Bat Family. Because just he drove Damien away, Tim away, uh, Dick Grayson away. He did everything he could to destroy the Bat Family. 
And so I think James Tinian's going to do a really good job of bringing the Bat family sort of back to status quo, which is going to be great. But um, from his interview, also, it doesn't sound like he's going to do what he did with Detective Comics, where when he was on Detective Comics, he made it basically a team book. And some people liked it, some people didn't. But for this, he, it doesn't sound like he wants to make it a team book, but he does want to, you know sort of reset the Bat Family, like, you know, it's already been confirmed, I believe, that, um, he's going to be bringing Nightwing back in 2020 when he takes over, so Dick Grayson's going to come back as Nightwing instead of being Rick Grayson with this weird guy that's, like, puts oil on his face and has a rope and has a black t-shirt. <laughs> he's gonna stop doing that, so we're gonna get Nightwing back. And also, Tony Daniel's gonna be doing art on the book, who's fantastic and one of the high points of Tom King's run, uh, right now. But, yeah, so, Batman's things are looking up for Batman. It's just Tom King doing his terrible Tom Kingness with this book. The dialogue's been so awful. He doesn't understand the characters and it's just terrible. But you have Tomasi doing a great job with the Texas Comics, doing fun issues, and I'm really excited with what uh, James Tinian's going to be doing with the Texas Comics. I think he'll do good. I don't know if he'll be like a legendary run or anything to where like you'll look back on in 10 years and be like, man, James Tinian really nailed it. I don't know if it'll be that, but I think it'll be like a good book. I think it'll be much better than Tom King. But yeah, uh, that's my thoughts on it. I want to know what your guys' thoughts on uh, the Batman news that we have right now with James Tinian taking over Batman book. I want to hear what you guys think about that in the comments below. Also, what are your thoughts on the current state of Batman, the different Batman comics we have right now? We also have the Superman Batman series uh, from Joshua Williamson, which is pretty good, but it's only one issue in at the time of recording this video. Um, but yeah, also, again, tonight, Tuesday, September 24th, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm going to be streaming, talking about comics with John De La Rose. Make sure to check that out and be there. But, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys later. Yeah. On my grind all day, gonna make a million sun ass someday. You know I'm in the building when I ride this way. Put me in the pound when I bite this game, uh.